Are you interested in real estate investing but not quite sure where to get started? Do you want to get the know-hows on creating ongoing passive income using the buy and hold strategy? Hi, I'm Janice Bowles, licensed realtor and co-founder of B Premier Ventures, a real estate development and consulting firm where we buy and beautify distressed real estate, renovate it, and resell for profit. With over 15 years of investing experience, B Premier has extensive knowledge in rural land development, fixing flips, and rental acquisitions. B Premier's current portfolio consists of properties within Florida and Virginia. Our firm services includes investor project consulting, project management, and group coaching. For more information, visit our website at bpremierventures.com and schedule a complimentary discovery session or subscribe to our email list. It's free. Follow me on Instagram at Janice Bowes for additional real estate investing tips. Be Premier Ventures, we buy and beautify. Three, two. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of a Let's Do a Talk show. It's your girl, LaDrain Howard Peterson, the CEO and founder of Do It, Delivering on Ideas and Thoughts. And you know what I do in a nutshell, right? I help to turn dreamers into doers. And I do it from two aspects. I do it from the aspect of career development resume writing, interview preparation, you're looking to change your job or you have a problem on your job, I am your girl. Then I also do it from a business aspect. If you're looking to start a business, you have some thoughts, ideas, and don't know how to bring them into fruition, I am your girl. Here on the Let's Do It Talk show, we were primarily created for entrepreneurs, right? We quickly realized that the entrepreneur is a whole entire person. So we talk about faith, we talk about finances, we talk about the future, and we talk about family and relationships. So we've been in a special series, and we have been focusing on a phenomenal project. We all grieve differently. We all grieve differently. So what we've been doing is we're having a series and this is the third episode where we're going to dive in. So today we're going to be talking about healing the hurt from hurt to healing. And our special guest on the show is one of our forward forward contributors, Reverend A. Colette Rice. And then we have a number of our co-authors. We have Monica Best, we have Devetta Henderson, we have Diota Renee Sweat, and we also have my co-visionary, Latasha Briscoe. But you know what I do before I get into the show, right? Yes, I talk about my weekend. So my weekend has been all about my apples, apples, Avery. He celebrated his birthday. Well, mind you, we had birthdays all throughout May. But this one... um, he thinks he's so special, which he is, but he thinks he's more special than everybody else. And so um, they kind of proved him right. So we're going to show uh, the video with him. So he loves basketball. He practices two to three hours a day. You'll see the video where they surprised him, had him dress up in his jersey. He thought he was going to eat. And they took him to the Washington Um, basketball game and he was so excited his reaction and then uh, we got on a plane we do a family trip every May but he said for some reason this year this is his birthday trip so we've been treating him as such so they've been having a great time they are water babies so they've been in the pool and just doing everything I told them I would get in the pool after today I needed to say what was left of my head so Let's jump into the conversation. So again, this book project has been phenomenal, already receiving so much positive feedback in terms of people um, not being able to uh, wait for the books to come through. And we are on the last day of our pre-launch. If, pre-launch, if you were thinking about buying it, but you haven't done so, make sure you reach out to the author's page that you know and click on that link. We don't want you to get mixed up with all the other links because we've been tagging each other. So let's jump right into the show. So first up, um, and I'll introduce uh, our first half, and then we will bring on the remainder of the authors and introduce them as such. So 
Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about From Hurt to Healing. So first up, we have none other than Reverend A. Kodak Rice. Hi, Reverend Rice. Hi. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, can you tell a little bit, I know, can you tell a little bit uh, about who you are to our audience for those who don't know you? Okay. Well, first and foremost, as always, thanks for having me. It's always such a joy, such a pleasure to be a part of Do It. Whatever Do It's doing, I love to do it. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> but I am, um, you know, a minister of the gospel, um, licensed and ordained, and I serve full-time in ministry. Um, my passion is just very broadly said to leave things better off um, when I leave them than when I found them. That's just my ultimate goal. And whatever that means in the time when God is doing what he's doing, I just love to be a part of that. So that's my story. Absolutely. And I love when you love being a part of it because you <laughs> are a praying somebody, but we're going to behave and we're going to go ahead and jump into the show. So um your contribution so first of all thank you so much for being a contributor to our project mm -hmm. we were very specific on who we reached out to and who we wanted to be a part of this and of course of course of course you so um i won't get you crying nor me but you've <laughs> been there with me um throughout my process and even before this so i certainly appreciate you and as i always say when i find a good thing i like to share it with other people so definitely um excited to be sharing you with um some of some some of my some of my friends and some of the um other authors some of their friends i'm sharing you but they can't have they, they can't have <laughs> they can't have you but um all just aside let's go ahead and jump into the topic so okay. um one of the reasons why I titled this episode as such because of your contribution and um, some of the things that you shared. So not sharing and not giving away, of course, everything that you wrote, but please proceed in terms of what you have to share with our audience. Right. Well, I, I, again, I want to say congratulations to you and Latasha as the visionaries, and then to all of these beautiful women who um, who stepped out, you know, on faith and really to a place of vulnerability to to share their story. I think the most important thing that we always need to keep in mind, and I hold on to in Scripture, and that's in the Book of Revelation, that reminds us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so our journey, while there may be some details that we may keep to ourselves, right? We just ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to share and lead us on how much we should reveal. But at the end of the day, it's really about so that we can help somebody else, right? And the way that God, um, you know, calls us and designs us to take is so that we can ultimately be a blessing. And I know you all are living that out right now. And um, the project will have a reverberating impact. Like you, you may not even see, even in your lifetime, um, what God intends to do in the sharing and communicating about your 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 hurt and your pain. I believe fervently in the wounded healer. And I believe that God uses our uh, wounds to usher in healing for others. And so, yes, um, the hurt will be there, but the healing is also on the horizon. And I think that's the hope that we all have to hold on to. That's the important piece of it, right? So, so just in, you know, I'll just share three, three, three pieces. And then, you know, as you all get the book and you delve in, you'll be able to, you know, um, see and glean from everybody and what they share. My, my piece was, you know, birthed out of my own pain uh, and grief journey. Um, and you, you're well acquainted with that, Ladrine, but um you know, I spent my lifetime, my mother had 
12 siblings. And so I spent my lifetime attending funerals, you know, seeing. So I was acquainted with the rituals, with the experience, but it didn't hit, hit, hit home until those closest to me, um, you know, transition from from earth to glory. And, and first it was my father and um, he, he passed away in 2000, in April of 2000. And that experience was, I would just say, interesting. You know, what, what, you know, my path that God had for me. I loved my father. We were close, a very close knit family. Um, our relationship um, with both my father and my mother were amazing. And it's interesting when you have your parents or whomever it is that we experience with loss, when they're in your life, you just have a hard time wrapping your head around life without them. And so you kind of stay in that space, you stay in that moment. Moment. We enjoyed each other, loved up on each other every step of the way. As you also know, in both instances, their their passing and transition was sudden. And so that's a different experience, not a, a, a more traumatic experience um, necessarily, but a different experience. Um, but but I just learned so much about you know grief in observing my journey with my father. When he passed, I had just started um, seminary and I was just in a certain place spiritually that it really helped me process what was just very devastating for me. And I remember God saying, this is where the rubber hits the road. If I am to you, who you say that I am, then th this is what it is. And don't worry about um, the, the just know that not, not don't worry, but know that I'm going to get you, get you through this. And so that's what it was with my dad. Fast forward, to 14 years later and my and and during that journey helping my mother heal helping her you know process and the family and staying up we 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 got by you know that's what god does like god gets you through and then um in 2014 um we lost my mother suddenly to a massive heart attack the day prior, we were out for ice cream, hanging out, having fun, laughing like we do, doing the family thing. And the next day she was gone. I shared with you that the week prior, it was Father's Day and Pastor Coates preached a sermon and the sermon title was You Got This. And that sermon title stayed with me. So I had a coupon from 1-800-Flowers and I sent myself flowers that arrived the day that I got the news that my mother died. I had the you know bright idea. <laughs> Little did I know it was the Holy Spirit to send myself a message. And I just wrote one simple um, phrase on the message to myself. You got this. Little did I know what the journey was ahead for me. And that was processing my mother going. And so the the road since then, the difference was amazing. The difference between my mother's passing and my father's passing, the experience was different. What I felt in my belly, all both of them very, very deep, but just different. It was something about... And my father and I were like this, like I was daddy's girl, daddy's baby. We were tight. We were all that. And the, the, but the experiences were just so different. And it was something about losing, having both of my parents gone then that, that shaped an experience that would be really, really, um, telling for me over the season. It was harder. It it took me longer to to get through it, to 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 even, you know, wake up and not hope that I had just experienced a nightmare and not the reality of my life. The fetal position in the bed, the tears, the the crying and not knowing the difference between night and day and all of that, right? But let me just go on to say that the the couple of things that I discovered through my God God's taught me so much. He's just taught me so much about life, about love, about legacy, about living. 
right? Because it really is all about living. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But what we really have is today, the present. And that's what it is. It's a gift. And and learning now how to, and then COVID and all of that is a whole nother dynamic. Um, but one thing is clear. And I think to everybody that grieves, it's so important that we understand that grief is a way that we all have to traverse. It's 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 ha- it's a way that we all have to go during this life. It's given to us. We hear it. We know it. And I think that, but really coming to that reality, that the clear before you experience the grief, just knowing that it's coming down the pipe. It's it's coming down the pipe for you, for yourself right? You going to be out of here one of these days. My parents used to say to me all the time, my daddy was famous for saying, I ain't going to be with you always. Like that's what they told us all the time, but we hear it, but we don't hear it. And what does that really mean? Right? So just embracing the reality that it's a way, the Bible says it's important once every man to die. When we embrace that reality, then it keeps us from getting into the fantasy right? The fantasy that then causes people to say things like, you know, how did God let my mother die or my father die or, you know, I lost my child or whatever it is that grief is, uh, you know, death is imminent. That's So that's the first thing, the death is imminent. The second thing is that we're, we're not going to be able to uh, avert so because death is imminent, we can't avert our encounter with, with grief, right? A lot of people try to, to um, g- get away with, you know, not accepting it. We try and pretend that, you know, the pain, we figure if we um, avoid the pain, that it's not going to, you know, hit us. If we pretend, right, if we stay in that space, um, of of denial, if you will, and if we don't sit in it. So, so it's very important for all of us who have experienced loss that we sit in and accept that loss for, for, for it to be a reality, that we have to sit in it, right? So grief is imminent. Death is imminent. Grief is, is insistent, right? So you can ignore it, you can pretend all you want. It's going to find its way back to you because it's going to insist that you take that you take notice. You're not going, you know, you're not going to get around it, right? And then the last thing I want to say is that our healing is important, right? So we know that death is imminent. We know that grief is insistent, but that our healing is 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 a part of this. So God doesn't expect for us to stay in this place. Yeah, you're gonna go there, you're gonna grieve. Something's wrong with you if you don't. Like, you know, people who tell people, oh, don't cry. Oh, they wouldn't want you to cry. Oh yeah, they would. <laughs> they would think something is wrong with you if you didn't grieve, right? Oh, they're in a better place. Stop with the cliches, stop with all of that stuff. That's not helpful, right? If they had an opportunity to come back, they wouldn't come back and I don't wanna hear that right? These are things that really are not helpful in that space. But what we do know is that God promised us beauty for ashes, right? In 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 Isaiah 61 and 3, the promise is there. He says he wants to console those who mourn in Zion, to give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for our mourning, and the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. So what's important for us to understand is that God wants us to come out of that. He is the lifter of our head. His desire is that, yeah, you're going to go there, but you can't stay there, right? And then I'm reminded of the passage in Joshua, Joshua, where the, you know, the whole nation was mourning Moses and God told Joshua, you know, Moses is dead. Now he gave him the, 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 the nation had 30 days. We, you know, allow for a space of time, right? Which is not defined by anybody, but you, 
but trust and believe that God wants to bring you out. He does not want us to stay in that deep, dark place. Sometimes you feel like you're going to stay there. You're wondering how on earth could I possibly get out? But God doesn't want you to stay there. And so I want to encourage everybody, you know, establish a praxis of doing the things that usher in your healing. Like, you know, we talked about different things, music, whether it's music, things that bring you joy, things that bring light and love into spaces. Celebrate life. You you talked about your apples, to, what you call them, apple, your apples, apples. <laughs> Celebrate, but you're celebrating life. And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. To all of the authors here, you know, God gave you a voice and he wants you to use it. He gave you a book. You got more books than you, you know, than this. He gave you a book. Write it, right? Some of you, you know, he may have even given you a song. I say sing it, you know, but whatever it is, um, in the words of my dear friend, uh, Ladreen Peterson, uh, do it. So that was really, really, really good in terms of the points that you um, that you touched based on. So I will not go through all of them because we will take over the entire conversation and we're okay. not doing that today. But okay. I do want to um, talk about the first one. Okay. The first one, death is imminent. Yeah. Um, I will have to tell you that maybe not long ago, like five, maybe like five years ago, like hearing mm-hmm. that drove me crazy. You know, mm-hmm. I grew up, um, okay. baptized 10 years old and I don't know, I had like a little old soul when it came to like studying the word because I've been studying the word since a kid. Right. I could never get like the death part never like really, really, uh, really went well with me. In fact, it was like horrible for me. I mean, anxiety and other things like that. But um, I, I, I wanted to say and, and um, reiterate on that because I did not fully grasp that mm. until mm. January of mm. last year. Wow. January of last year. So the timing of it Mm. was like unbelievable because Mm. who knew what I was going to come, you know, what I was going to face for the remainder of the year. But everything, your lessons that you learn and the things that you come about. So I want to double back and encourage people to really um, take heed to what you said on that point and, and, and study it on that point. Um, because that is honestly and sincerely like one major part that is helping me right. through my process. And it does. Mm-hmm. Helping me through my process because I know mm-hmm. that when my mom and my sister were born, like mm-hmm. there was already an end date. So every time I try to think something or if I were to think against that, it would be going against God's will. Right. So that point right there, and that's a whole sermon, whole right. lesson, whole everything. But um, I definitely wanted to pinpoint on that one right there. And then we'll have some time at the end to we'll have group discussion. And then we'll also have time at the end where you come back and you circle back and do a close out on what have you. So we'll we'll um, we'll jump into the authors and then um we will dialogue and go about into conversations. I'm so excited. So thank you so much, um, Reverend Rice, for sharing those three points and also providing um, the information in terms of your journey, because a lot of people uh, may think because you are a a woman of cloth uh, that you somehow have a different pathway. So um, for you to be able to share that, yeah, we all agree differently, but listen, here's my grief. So I so appreciate you sharing your story and you. I'm also providing the tips and for being a contributor in our book. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to transition to the interviews with the authors and I'm super excited. Um, we're all ready tonight again. It's the last night for pre-launch orders. So again, if you're interested, make sure you go to your authors, um, the author that you know page 
and make sure that you place their order. So first up, we have Diotha Renee Sweat. How are you this evening? I'm fine. How are you? I am well. I am well. I'm well. So I'm excited and we are just going to jump right into this interview. Um, so first up, what was your inspiration or your divine nudge that led you to share your story in this book anthology? Well, that's a very interesting question because um, I was scheduled to participate in a different book. Mm. And I had said yes, that I would participate. And um, when I said yes, it just seems like my entire schedule just had a tornado effect wow. that I could not commit to the uh, to what I said I would do. I had even sent payment and something happened and the visionary for that particular book had to send me the payment back because she said, I, I, I don't remember exactly what she stated, but I got the money back. And so I was sitting uh, in this particular chair and um, I was saying, oh man, I, 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 I don't like to go back on my word, but I don't have the time to commit. And Ms. Briscoe's uh, feed popped up on my Facebook. And uh, it was like, we all, we, we have you lost your mom and how are you dealing with the grieving process? And I was sitting there like, okay, maybe this is the book. So I didn't say yes. I said, I reached out to Ms. Briscoe and asked her what the requirements were and, and it fit into my schedule perfectly perfectly and so so now i have to sit here and say okay i need to go back to the other uh visionary and let her know that i can't do this um my mother wanted to write books mm. so i have uh i just moved into a new home and i have her uh writings in a box in my house and so i said well maybe this is a way uh that i can honor my mother because i've always been uh since she's uh, passed on, I've been trying to figure out a way to how I can honor her legacy. And she was the writer. I'm not the writer, <laughs> but I am writing about her uh, as I launch into the world as an author. And so I just think that um, when we want to do right by what God has designed us to do, uh, sometimes we get on the wrong bus and he Mm. Makes the bus have a flat tire, run out of gas or something so that you do not reach the destination in that bus. And so I truly believe that this was the bus that I was supposed to be on because everything worked. There has been no problems with my schedule. There's been nothing. And so I know that this is orchestrated by God, that this is the book that I am supposed to uh, be a part of. And uh, it was it was been a healing process for me as well. Awesome, awesome. Don't you love it? When I, you know, it's a cliche when people be like, won't he do it? But when he do it, you be like, what else can I say? Won't he do it? He lines everything up perfectly, perfectly. I always like to say God got jokes. Ah. <laughs> he got jokes. Listen, that's an understatement for my life right now, but that's another show, another book, another storyline. So let's move into the next question. So what was the most challenging part of pinning your story? the entire story because I, we had a deadline and I will tell you on my way into work, on my way to the store, I could uh, think of what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. but when it was time for me to stroke the keys, my brain would just freeze on me. And so I found myself uh, like a, a mad scientist and a college student writing that paper at the last minute that is due at midnight. And so the day prior to, um, I had to close myself off from everyone and I had to go and put some music on and I got a glass of wine. And I will tell you, I wrote that entire chapter through tears. I cried so hard that my, I, you know how sometimes when you cry so much, you get on your own nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I had got on my own nerves be like if you do not stop crying so you could meet this deadline but uh, it was just very very therapeutic and um it was uh it was just hard for me uh to put the words 
uh, together. But um, after I did that, I had to put it into Grammarly to make sure I made some sense because I was crying so hard, but uh, it was writing the entire process. It was starting the first word all the way to the last word was hard. It was very hard. So um, so we're talking about um, healing the hurt, healing the hurt. So what, what resonated with you in terms of like healing the hurt? Was there a, a, a major part of the, um, the five stages of grief that stood out for you? Was there one particular stage? No. Um, so I've, what I found in this project was that I did not uh, complete some of those stages. I, because I am a go-getter and, and let's get her done type person. And so I really uh, found myself with guilt, dealing with guilt because I hadn't uh, followed on something that the spirit told me to do. I, 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 the Reverend has spoke about, um, um, I recently lost my father in 2018. So, and then we went into the pandemic and uh, this year has just been very emotionally draining uh, for me because I'm like, I feel, you feel like an orphan now. And so I did not realize until I was doing this project that there was, I was stuck somewhere in the grieving process. And so this book allowed me to be uh, brutally honest with myself and say, hey, if you wanna be healthy, if you wanna live long life being happy, then you must face this in the face and deal with it. And so this book forced me to do that and uh, I, I feel like I lost some weight now. My clothes don't say I lost any weight, but I feel like I lost some weight. <laughs> Mine did the opposite effect. So let me know your grief diet so I can pick that one up. Um, yes. It's so funny that you mentioned the word um, orphan. And the first time I ever heard someone to really, an adult, to talk mm -hmm. about that um, from the passing of their mom and their father was Reverend Rice. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh my goodness, never even um, thought of the concept that way. So it's funny, that, I'm not funny, but like hearing you say it again, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. like, that's how I view it now when um, someone loses both of their parents. And mm -hmm. we have a number of um, co-authors in the book that had mm -hmm. experienced that same thing. So that common thread really stood out to me um, as well. So the last question for you, um, not really a question statement, please provide our viewers with a snippet <laughs> of your chapter. A very uh, snippet. Well, um, with my chapter, I speak on uh, different levels and different phases of uh, my relationship with my mother. Um, I am a military person, so I left home at 19, but our bond was still is uh, true blue and tight like glue just when I, I was away. And so um, I share in the book some funny things that we have, that we did uh, while I was uh, living abroad. And um, I also in the book show that um, I think as women, uh, we just have this level of strength that um, we don't even realize that we have until we need to have it. And so, um, but I also think that I share in, in the book that uh, having that uh, extraordinary level of strength can also be um, that thing that uh, can take you down. And so, um, I just want people to know about um, this is, uh, well, first of all, this has been uh, very challenging because it's vulnerable. The Reverend did say about being vulnerable and I don't talk about myself. And so I had to open up and share a piece of me that um, people don't know about me. And so um, I think that it, it would allow people to see uh, why Diotha is the way Diotha is and it's because of her mother. And so, um, and why I commit my life to, to serve the two like I do was because of my mother. And so um, I, I just think that it will, it, 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 it's gonna be therapy 
therapy to someone because it was therapy to me. And so um, I don't I don't want to say anything else. I just want to leave it leave it intriguing. So you'll just want to get the book <laughs> because like most people don't know anything about Diota. So if anything, you're gonna learn some intimate things about who I am as a as a person. Yeah. Yep. 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 And thank you so much. Um, I don't want you to say anything, but one thing that I have to say is I thought that the name of your chapter was going to be Good Friday. And I'll leave that as a cliffhanger and let everyone else um, read. Yeah. Yeah. That was what got me in your chapter. (laughs) So thank you so much. We're going to have group in a moment. But next Mm -hmm. up, we have the Betta Henderson. Hi, the Betta. Hello, hello, Ladrine. I'm I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Although it seems kind of funny to say you're happy to be here as we talk about grief, but yet and still, I am happy to be here today. Yeah, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, looking lovely. So we want to follow through in the same set of questions. So let's begin. What was your inspiration or divine nudge that led you to share your story in this book anthology? Well, again, it was divine intervention. I had, um, as Diotha had, I had, I had just come out of, or was in the process of coming out of an anthology. It was my first one. It was wonderful, but it was absolutely overwhelming. And I was like, oh no. I'm going to take a break from that for a minute. And I actually was going to focus on my uh, the next book in my book series, which was based on my mother. Mm. And so I had connected with uh, you and Latasha. So I was in the through the Sweat Pass and Chill conference. So I was on that group. And when I saw the uh, author call come out, I said, you know how you go past a, a, a store window and you look at something and then you, wait a minute, did I see that? And you back up. I said, oh no, I've got to do this because after 13 years of, uh, 13 years after losing both of my parents, you know, I knew that I was not, I was still, you know, going through it. And during that time, I was the one, meaning the one who had to say, I don't have time to cry. I don't have time. I got to get it done. You know, it's get it done time. So I went through it. So, but I, and I, but I never had to chance to share it with anybody. So for me, what stopped me was there's your chance to get it out and to let it out and maybe share it with someone because it was indeed an experience. So that was it for me. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And, um, just to correct you, like you were not finished with the project. You were in the middle of it because you were like, actually, was, it was like, it was I don't almost know, in the front. I'm going to do this, but I am going to do this. So I commend you on your dedication and making sure that you pull through and that you did what you knew like needed to be done. So congratulations to you twice. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. So the next question is, what was the most challenging part? <laughs> your story probably like most people because if you remember i had an episode um and thank you for correcting me i was in the middle of that of that but i had to i didn't care i said i just have to make it through both of them because i'm gonna do this this grief one so anyway um like many of us it was the actual pinning it the actual writing because in order to write it you have to live through it. It's not just thinking of one little thing. It's going through each individual thing that went on. And so as I live through it again, you know, the, there the, here come the tears. And so I'm typing. And as I'm typing, I'm speaking the words. And then she said, and then I'm looking and I can't see the words that are on the screen because the tears are coming down my eyes. And I'm... Uh, <laughs> So it was it was a horrifying experience. And as you might remember, I was the one who went on the group page and said, I can't do this. And it was so bad because that's the reason why it was the last day, about four hours before the cutoff, that I was in that state because I knew to have to have to write it was to have to relive it. And I was really not trying to do that, you know, as much as I wanted to get it out. So that was definitely the hardest part, just reliving it. 
Yeah, you sure did start something in that group. <laughs> but actually, I mean, again, I think that it was so healthy that you did that because all of us were feeling like some type of way. And what that did was to allow us to know that we were not alone. We were not exactly. alone. I can almost bet that 75% of us were at the same time reaching that deadline, like crying, like crying or very emotional in some sort of way. So nope, you putting it in there, just opened it up for everyone else to do so. So I applaud you for that. <laughs> so next up, like, um, you're talking about, you know, healing your hurt, right? And last week we talked about the five stages of grief. So which stage of grief would you say that resonates with you more or was the most difficult stage that you were in? By far, the most difficult stage I was in was depression because mm -hmm. I went deep. I went deep. I went so deep that I didn't, there were points where I didn't even realize I was depressed. There were points where, because see, you're talking about, um, like Dr. Colette said, I lost both my parents five months apart. So that was, I was like, like she said, the, or, the orphan. I didn't have a home. I didn't have, you know, it was just total devastation for me. So I stayed in depression way longer than any person should have actually stayed in it. And thank God I, I was able to finally come out of it. And um, I couldn't have without help. So when you need help, when you feel like you need help or you know you are beyond your control to try to keep yourself together, you should never be afraid to reach out for help, whether it be your church, whether it be um, someone social, a friend, someone. My friends literally sent, my friend who was out of town sent her sisters over to my house and bombarded, came in my house, up my stairs and was like, we don't want to hear it. We want to know what's going on. We're pulling you out of this. And that was the beginning of me coming out of the depression. It was by far the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even going to add it because we will be all night. So I'm going to go to the <laughs> question. Um, please, it was a statement. Please provide our viewers with an overview, a little snippet of your chapter. Well, um, my the name of my chapter chapter is all I could do was breathe because there were many moments in this whole journey that journey that all I could do was just say and you know move on to the next thing so my chapter is about um what I call the process that my mother and I went through by ourselves. Now, I know for a fact that there were people in my life every day. I have a brother, I have you know friends, I have so many people in my life, but there was a point in my mom's journey. It was this, this book is about my mother's journey. She had an illness. And so it was, the book is about what I call our journey together as she went through the last, few months of her um, of her illness and I just it was about honor it was how I wanted to honor her in everything that I did there was anything that she wanted I was there for her I moved you know I moved out of my house different things that I did and to show her as being the the phenomenal woman that she was so I wanted to show me honoring her and her, and just to let people know who she was as a person, and the legacy that she left her li in her life. So okay. that's um, that's all I'm going to give on that. And you did a good job with that. Like throughout your chapter, like your title was highlighted throughout, and mm -hmm. of course, I went through the manuscript for the final viewing, and. I actually was pausing and reading. <laughs> so you know how many times you wrote that in there. <laughs> to breathe. So um, thank you for that. And and and, um, and I do understand you expressing your feelings in terms of like the depression. And we do have to be careful with that. But uh, no timetable on grieving, but we don't want to get stuck. And that's just um, reiterating some of the things from last um, week, but um, also like I'm very careful in terms of 
that thing of I did it way too long or something like that. But I do understand and, um, being careful of not being, you know, stuck in, in a place with that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um excited about uh, uh, our book project and, and, and love like the different variations of what people did with their chapter. But um, the breathing part, I bet you when people are reading yours, they're going to be taking moments to breathe because I did it every time I saw it. So um, thank you so much. And we'll circle back with the group in just one moment. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, we have Monica Best. Monica, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> yes, I'm like, get on mute, Monica. Let's do this, one. <laughs> So let's jump right into it. What was your inspiration or divine nudge that led you to share your story in this book anthology? Um, just to honor my mother, um, I just felt like it was a time in my life when I just felt like I needed to do something to honor her, but also like help somebody else. I like to serve. And so when I saw your message come out that you was doing this, it's like immediately, almost a light bulb came on in me. It was like, you got to do this. So I just hurried up as soon as I saw it, a matter of fact. I was like, me? <laughs> I probably was the first one. I don't know. And so that was my inspiration, just to be a help to somebody. It, by sharing your story, you always help somebody else. Yep, 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 yep. Um, what was the most challenging part of pinning your story? just like everybody else, the whole thing, I felt like I had to relive it. So literally, every time I sat down to write it, I would get like stuck and I would just get up and don't write it. So literally I was at the last, I'm like everybody else, I was at the last second, literally typing. And as I was typing, I would get emotional. So I would get up and do something else and then look at the time and sit down and do it again. Then I had to send it to my aunt she was looking over with me and she was like, nah, you need to re try to reword it. You can't get all the words in there. You only can do 2,500 words. So she was helping me with how to, you know, put it together so it could all make sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, which stage of grief best describes where you currently are on your grief journey? It's like acceptance, like, my mother passed in 96. Not that time matters because I had still had my moments. I think you revisit some of those stages uh, sometimes. Like I already went through the bitterness, being mad, not mad at God, like fussing with him, but like all these people out here, <laughs> basically this is the conversation I had with him. Uh, all these people out here who don't even really want to be mothers, <laughs> Why are they still, you know, I'm just asking, why are they still here? Why you take my mother? My mother was serving God. She was doing everything, you know, like, why did you take my mother? So I went through that stage. That was like early on. I went through all the stage. I don't think I did a depression stage. Um, I don't necessarily think people have to go through all those stages. That's just my opinion. I'm not, uh, I don't think you go through the stages that you go through. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's Yep, yep, yep. Um, can you please provide our viewers a snippet of your chapter? My chapter describes uh, the relationship I had with my mom. And my mom had two kinds of cancer. She beat one of them and the other one, you know, she succumbed to. Um, and so, yeah, it just describes that and some things that transpired in between them, like how I was basically thought I had to still take care of her even though she was gone. Y'all let's read that in the book. I'm not giving that away. <laughs> but that was like a real eye opener for me and a real one of my friends that came to me and told me something and it just snapped me out of that. Um, and basically I felt like some in some aspects that I had to do everything that my mother was doing. So like how she was helping everybody else, all those people were now coming to me and how I had to like stop that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, again, all the stories are powerful, right? Um, <laughs> your story in terms of the incident that happened in your um, your book with your aunt, that piece of it, 
Um, it's so real. It's so real. I won't talk about it, but Monica, um, I definitely want to thank you. Um, yeah, like every day, Monica, like <laughs> it was almost harassment, Monica. <laughs> Monica would call, would text me, call, stop by, bring flower, bring a sandwich, bring a fruit, bring a everything. <laughs> <laughs> where time got and I was just like nah she was like I'm checking I'm gonna come and I was like Monica but I actually <laughs> like genuinely appreciate the whole um reaching out I mean we have traveled before so we are friends prior to this but definitely through this season we have become um, much, much closer. And I just want to publicly say, like, thank you. I, I totally and sincerely appreciate you being there for anything that I may have needed. And the times when my phone was on do not disturb, not giving up on me, but reaching out and saying, you're just making sure that I'm okay. <laughs> so I appreciate you. Yeah, you starting stuff, okay? That's, that's uh, thank you. Like. Next up. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we have my co-visionary, Latasha Briscoe. Latasha. Hey, hey, Dream. Hey, co-authors. <laughs> and I know it's close to your bedtime, so it's we want to keep this thing moving, <laughs> right? Um, so first and foremost, like, what was your inspiration or your divine nudge that led you to be a visionary and partner up for this yep. book anthology? So really, the the night you made that call to me, and you were like, I want to write a book about my mom, and you opened up a whole can of worms that I had been pushing to the side for years. Because my mom passed in 2009, and while I've used bits and pieces of her stories um, on different platforms, that night you made me realize, no, you need to share what you actually went through with her loss, and I mean, with losing her, and that really was that push that I needed. Amen for you uh, being obedient to God. Um, so next, uh, what was the most challenging part of pinning your story? One was starting mm. because just like all of the other co-authors have mentioned, it was hard to get started because too many emotions kept coming up. And um, I'm look, I've been looking in the chat to make sure Erica wasn't on there, but I'm the person that actually tried to slide in that to say, can we have attention? Because I wanted to, I was trying to show my concern for my co-authors, but in reality, I hadn't started writing yet. And I'm like, I ain't going to make it by Tuesday. That ain't going to work. And um, I, I sat up one night and I said, you know what? I need to just write and I'm just going to write whatever comes to me. And I ended up writing probably 30 pages <laughs> and I knew that was going to be a problem to get down to 2,500 words, but definitely that, that starting piece was very hard. Yeah. 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 Um, so we talked about the stages of grief last week and tonight it is healing the hurt. So combining both of those, what stage of grief best describes where you currently are on your grief journey? So I, I, I think I made up a stage, but I know I can say acceptance, but definitely um, the testimony stage because everything that I've gone through and, and like Monica just said, everybody doesn't go through all those stages, but I've been through that depression. I've been through the anger piece, um, but accepting it and um, knowing that I have a testimony to share. Uh, as I mentioned, I've, I use bits and pieces of my mom's story because she has um, a, a story that has a lot of elements to it, including domestic violence. And so I've spoken um, to various groups regarding domestic violence, and I used her as an example, um, one on her being a survivor, but also me as a, as a young girl witnessing all of this. 
And what I realized while we were writing um, our chapters for this book was I've always, after she passed, I shared things about her, but I never talked about how I actually dealt with losing her and not being able to talk to her about all of the things that I watched her go through and how um, she showed so much strength doing a lot of the things that she went through and how that strength, or even if it wasn't strength, um, it was just a you know, a sense of survival that she was experiencing, um, how that actually molded me. And so now I can say that I'm in this testimony stage because thinking about it all, writing it all out and then sharing it, I I've learned so much about my mother with her not even being here that I appreciate and respect the relationship, even as short as it was that we actually had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Powerful, powerful. Um. And again, your story is powerful. Everybody's story is powerful. Um, the whole thing that gets me is like the night before. And we uh, have to enjoy life, right? So it's the ice cream thing. I won't give your yeah. story away, but when people are looking through your chapter, definitely look at the ice cream thing. But I thought your chapter was going to be called Protector. Because you of know, the thing that you had in yeah. there, so I don't. You can you can talk about it in in the last part, but it wasn't to rev you up to go into that. But yeah. um, that just it, it it was my thing. Oh, I saw a protector all throughout it, and it made me understand some of the conversations that you and I had like way back prior. And I just will always had that in the back of my mind. So when it came out. I was like, ah, oh, it was like an aha moment and better understanding um, your actions and how you uh, how you react and act in, in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So lastly, and you can tie that in or not, but um, please provide our viewers with a snippet of your chapter. Yep, so um, I titled it, and Protector would have been um, a title that I probably would have went for, but I titled it My Mother's Shoes because, you know, we learn through going through life that um, not to judge people until you had a chance to walk in their shoes. And when my mom, since my mom passed in 09, I've, I've literally been trying to walk in her shoes and understand her life. Um, so that's why I titled it that. But you mentioned that ice cream and I'm a, and, and Reverend Bryce, we'll talk about it offline because we don't want to give it away. But I understand the ice cream celebration that you had the day before with your mother. And I wholeheartedly, um, when people talk about celebrating life and birthdays and just milestones, like I'm all for it because you never know. And you never know what memory you're going to create in that mm. single moment. So just do it. Yes. Yes. Do it. You know, you, <laughs> you already know. Don't even, don't hesitate. <laughs> so what we're going to do is bring everyone back on screens together and we're going to have um, a group discussion. So um, these are quick questions and um, remember, Mark, so I'll rephrase your question in a different way. So I'm going to go round one then round two. So round one, and um, we can go in the order in which you spoke, and then um, Reverend Rice, you can go last. Um, so for the authors, what was your leading scripture or quote chosen for your chapter? And Reverend Rice, what was the chapter that got you through um, your grieving process? So let's start off with um, with you first, Iosa. What was your leading scripture or, or quote that you chose? My uh, leading scripture is Matthew 5 and 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm. Amen. I, I, am I supposed to explain why I picked that one? Yes. Okay, so uh, I am normally the person that is comforting everyone. And so normally when you are the comforter, you don't get comforted when you need it. And so I felt that this was a... Um, this journey was providing the comfort that I needed and uh, losing not just my mother, but my father as well. So that's the reason why I picked that particular scripture. Yeah, and that scripture is throughout the book. So I 
when when a scripture was um was reiterated or listed twice, I let it ride. That's my closing scripture. So definitely um, relate to that. So next up, how about you, Devetta? My scripture was Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. And again, it goes right back to the fact that I wanted to, and even as I was caring for her, wanted to honor her because my mother was like the little old woman in the shoe. She had about 89,000 children. Everyone called her mom. People like 20, 30 years older than her walking past saying, hey, mom, I'm looking like who? And so, you know, I just, and so she she gave to so many and put into so many lives. And so I just always wanted to just honor her for who she was. Awesome. Monica, how about you? Jeremiah 29, 11. Oh. I plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Uh, I chose that. That's my favorite scripture. And I chose that scripture because it's like, this is, I've always wanted to know what my purpose was. And I knew it had something to do with serving and helping because I love to do it and I do it everywhere I go. But I did not know what. And I was always trying to figure it out. And this is like propelling me into it. Yeah. Um encouraging, motivating, inspiring people. That's good. That's good. That's good. And Reverend Rice, what about you? What's your favorite scripture or quote? Hmm. That's that that's that's not going to work cuz I have a million of them. But <laughs> the one that I chose for for this project was Isaiah uh 61 verse 3 to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Mm. And how about you, Tosh? So I, I normally always lean on um, Philippians, but for this particular project in this chapter, it was Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord. And lean not on your own understanding because I, I tell you everything, not only the chapter, but everything that happened while we were working on this project was there. like, no shot it, like it was all God. I, it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> That's a whole different show. So yeah. we're gonna go to the next question. Um, if you had to capture your experience in one word, Reverend Rice, that's a hands up for you. One word, what would it be? Doing so good, you were doing so good. Diosa, what's your one word? I would say that my one word is complex, mm. and so it brings to mind. Uh, I'm a. I like. I like to um, correlate music to everything, and so India Ari has a song that's called "Complicated Melody," mm. and so. Um, I just think that my mother would always uh, laugh and say, we named you Diotha because you are going to be a complex person. And so I found out, I found that this was just a very difficult um, project and it had me out of my shell of comfortability. And so uh, if I had to have a theme song for this, it would have been a, be a complicated melody for this, yes. I thought you were going to say The Pieces of Me by Lettucey. I don't have a voice, but I used to sing that song at the top of my lungs because of the complexities of, of me that I am aware of. So uh, next, how about you, Devetta? Okay, here we go, because um, the one word that I could come up with was humbling because um, it just, the whole experience has brought me down to my knees where Big Bad Betty was no longer, you know, there was nothing that I wouldn't have done. It just, I mean, seeing her go, see my mom go through the process of just leaving. Um, and it is a process. It just, it humbled me. I just wanted to just be there for her in any way. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. Monica, your one word. 
revived. Mm -hmm. This process has like really revived me. I, I can't even explain it to you. Um, it's like I'm re renew. I'm a different person. I'm, I'm who God originally has called me to be. I'm stepping into it. So I've, I'm just been revived by this whole process. Amen, amen, amen. Tasha, how about you? Um, uncovered, uncovered, mm -hmm. because I, I'm a, I love to tell stories with details um, just to make sure people are engaged. But with this one, this was different. I had to really take down my guard and share some intimate things, but also be careful on how I protected my mother, but uncover because it, it yeah, like everyone else, we, we really had to get down to our knees and really be humble on how we address some things here. Yeah, 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 definitely. So um, Reverend Rice, what's your one word? Hope. Oh. Go it, it say say a little more because I know what that is. So say a little bit more. I I just believe that you know without hope there's no need for us to exist, and I think that there is hope for those of us who seek who seek after our healing and yeah. seek it without That's delay. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So um, we're gonna do the quick this or that, and then um, Reverend Rice for your uh, closing. You're going to close us out there and then I'll do the final let's do it um, closing. But this has been so good. So y'all, this or that, right? So I've been giving out the rules every week um, since the first show, right? Because <laughs> so, it's like, Reverend Rice, I'm not messing with you. So let's go through this uh, really quickly uh, with the this or that. And again, we go in the order in which, we, uh, which uh, you all spoke. So this or that, online shopping or in-store shopping. And audience, y'all, please put your, your answers in the feed to your uh, your vote matters. Online show, shopping or in-store shopping. Diotha. Online. The better. In-store. Monica. In-store. Tasha. Online. Reverend Rice. Online. I'm in store. So it's a halfway tie between us. Uh, oh, y'all putting y'all's online. This is making it look skewed, but okay. Online, online, online. Next one, sauces. So I'm a sauce girl. Do y'all prefer y'all sauces on y'all food on the side or on the top of your food? Diota. On the side. The better. Top it. You, Monica. On the side. <laughs> Tasha. On the side. Reverend Rice. On the side. On the side too. So uh we on the side. Um the next one. Oh, they got a lot of different variations. The next one up uh, flowers or candles. So I was going to go with the smell of them, and that's my true intent, but rather you like them, whichever way or not. But just to let you know, the intent of it was for um, smell. Uh, Diosa, flowers or candles? Candles. The better. Flowers. Monica. Candles. Tasha. I'm biased. Flowers. I knew that. I shouldn't even <laughs> ask you. Reverend Rice. For the smell? Yes. Candles. And for me, candles. Reverend Rice, I thought you was going to say flowers. No, I love flowers, but I love to see flowers. I got it. Mm -hmm. um, candles, candles, candles online. All right. So those are only three that we had. So very good. People are chiming in on uh, online with their various answers. So I just like to do that to break up and add some laughter to our seriousness. So, um, we are winding down to the last component of it. And Reverend Rice, very quickly, um, please provide your closeout and your overview. Yeah, I, I, I again, I want to thank you, ladies, um, 
for your contribution. I was really blessed tonight by your testimonies, and I, I'm looking forward to reading each one of your chapters. Um, I believe that there is healing balm in our expression. It um, is so important that we continue to write our stories and share our stories. It was uh, Maya Angelou who said, um, write until it hurts and then write until it doesn't hurt anymore. And so if you guys are so inclined, continue. Um, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is co continue. It was something that Latasha said that I think is so important and that oftentimes we miss it in the, in the, being our being daughters, if you will. So first and foremost, letting the daughter in you grieve. I think that is so important. But I also want to say to look for your mother in you. Like we go through life. And I think I heard someone say that, you know, we we miss so many moments because we're always looking at our mothers in one dimension. You know what I mean? And even in relationship. But now that you're looking back on it, look at, you know, find the woman in her, you know, and see the woman in you. Find the the gifts that she left you and the legacy, you know, which is so, so important that all of us have been given a legacy. And those are the things like seek to look at what you celebrate. Right. Seek to look at like I heard you talk about strengths. I heard you talk about the gifts in your mother. Know that our mothers are com complex just as we are complex. So, you know, it's not making, them, you know, lifting them up so high that you don't see and even celebrate the complexities in their lives and what they've shown you. The personality that comes out, the quirkiness, if there's quirkiness there, things you like and even perhaps some things that you didn't like. You celebrate all of that and then celebrate the legacy, what they have left us that it is our intentions or it should be to celebrate that and then, of course, um, to pass it on. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Amen, amen. So as always, thank you, Reverend Rice, for um, leaving us with that um, that word. And I should have asked you to pray. That's what I should have asked you to do right but um thank you ladies thank you so much for being a part of this project and thank you for sharing your stories um again i said it time and time again and i'm probably going to use the word powerful over and over again my other word is impactful um i have had to read through the manuscript several times and each time i got something um inspiring out of the stories and I just can't wait for people to get their hands on it. And as I said, like over and over again from the beginning, we knew that it wasn't going to be an ordinary book, right? So we pulled out all the stops. It's sort of like a workbook. It's a resource book. And then we got a little extra things all like throughout the book. So again, make sure that you get your hands on a copy of it and if you're going through um, grieving, don't do it alone. If you know someone else that's going through it, um, please, by all means, support them and, and purchase a book. So, ladies, we have come to the end of the show. And thank you all again. Thank you to everyone who tuned in online. I know me write down the names, but thank you to um, Minister Andre Watts, who's always online. Um, Elder um, Major Bandy, those are my, my childhood sandbox friends. Pamela Cousins, Lisa McNeil Lane, um, Dakota, our um, co author, Zakia Butts, uh, Christine Brown, and who else we have? Robin Antoinette. And uh, I can't go all the way to the top, but uh, Teresa Black Diamond Sledge Jackson. Uh, but thank you all, everyone, for tuning in. Um, we have one more episode where we will be closing out with the final four authors, and I will be sharing my story uh, next week as well. And we also will be sharing resources. So we will have um, resources uh, uh, provided for you that you all actually can take advantage of. And then, oh... One more thing, I'm going to make sure I put Mount Enos um, grief session in the feed um, so that it's open to everyone and it is actually, is it tomorrow, Reverend Rice? It's Thursday, this Thursday. This Thursday, this Thursday. <laughs>
like for the years to prepare me for this um this point in stage. So uh, upcoming shows, we have Money Making Monday. We switched it to the last Monday of the month. So the ladies will be here on Memorial Day. Ooh, I'm on vacation. I gotta, yeah, we will be here on Memorial Day. And then we will have um, the generational bridges. That's gonna be asking the same question to various age groups. And we're gonna do the relationship segment. So that's gonna be the summer, June and July. So thank you all so much. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. Let's do it talk show. Again, purchase the book if you have not received it. And I think I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. Thank you and good night. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, <laughs> bye. Yeah.